Hello everyone, this is Brenda Hipsher. I'm a field marketing manager with x -Rite Photo and we want to welcome you to this webinar today with our Colorado Mark Wallace. Mark is a commercial fashion photographer in Phoenix, Arizona. Mark travels all over the country doing workshops and teaching and using x -Rite. Uh, color checker passport he has done a lot of videos for us we're very excited about this new webinar he's doing for us today and so mark take it away all right hey everybody thank you so much brenda for uh doing this it's really um we apologize for having two systems but really the stuff that i want to show you today we really needed to have some video uh, capabilities and so we're going to be um, packing a lot of stuff into today's webinar. Make sure you ask questions so either use the uh, chat in Ustream or, or go to meeting to ask those questions because we want this to be as valuable to you as possible. And so um, really quickly let me show you my uh, screen here. I've got a bunch of different software that I'm going to be using today. We're going to be doing a lot in Lightroom today. That's really sort of where we're going to be living um, but we're also going to be going through uh, using the DNG Profile Manager. I'll show you what that does and how you can use that, how that interfaces with uh, Photoshop. I'm going to be showing you some things in Bridge, how you can create DNG files, how you can take those and then create custom profiles from those using uh, Adobe Camera Raw, and then how you can use that in Photoshop as well. So we also have Photoshop kicked up here. Um, and then we have uh, some other software that I haven't launched yet but that is the uh, color checker passport software. So if you don't have Lightroom uh, and you're just uh, living still in the world of uh, Photoshop alone, which a lot of people do, I'll show you how to do everything that we're doing in Lightroom in Photoshop, um, or you can choose which method works best for you. And so um, just really quickly, let me show you in Lightroom what we're gonna be doing. We have uh, uh, several pictures here that I just brought in from my existing catalog and I have I don't know how many thousands of pictures or hundreds, I guess, of models doing this exact thing here, just holding a color checker passport. And what I want to do is, first we're going to talk to you about how to, to properly capture a photo like this so that we get all of the uh, use that we possibly can out of our passport. And then once we do that, we're going to be going into Lightroom. We're going to be making adjustments, assigning profiles, doing some post-production, setting white balance, and maybe looking at contrast and, and some color corrections as well. So you can see exactly how this is used. And then once we do that, I'll show you how to apply the changes that you make in your, uh, your calibrated photo all over to the rest of the photos that are in the, the set that you're working on. So for example, let's say we have these three pictures right here. Well, you'd want to first calibrate using the calibrated uh, shot and then apply that to the other two photos. And so I'll show you how you can do that. So you set it up once, and then once you have that finished, you can apply it to everything. And uh, we'll, we'll do that really quickly. Okay, so what we're gonna do, in fact, I, I was just looking here at the, at the screen. We have, it looks like Maryland and Pennsylvania and Colorado and Michigan and uh, Massachusetts and Hawaii, Canada, Switzerland, the United Kingdom. So we have people from all over the place. Um, I haven't seen anybody from India yet, but usually we have people joining us from Asia as well. So welcome uh, to everybody. All right, well, what we wanna do first is I wanna show you how you uh, properly capture this in a studio environment to make sure that you get the most bang for the buck uh, when you're using that. So one thing that's really important to note is when you're using this, uh, don't actually touch the colors. The oil on your hands are gonna get in there. So uh, what you're gonna do is you wanna hold it from the back like that. So let's start really quickly. We have a really small studio over here and uh, I'm going to get that all set up. We're gonna be doing some tethered capture. So let me start the tethered capture really quickly. And I'll turn this on. We're gonna go right over here to our little studio. And uh, I know it looks like we have two different places, but we're all good really fast. And are we tethered? Yeah. And so we have a model. Her name is Alexis. So come on over, Alexis. We're going to um, take some pictures. Now, what we've done here is um, we've sort of created this space that's not uh, necessarily terrific. We have this really blue background. And I asked Alexis to wear this red dress so we can have a lot of color contrast. Because uh, when we create our profile, I'll show you how these colors sort of change. So. We know this is sort of an ugly company. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alexis walked in. She's like, really? That's what we're shooting? Uh, but um, yeah, because uh, we want to sort of show you how the colors shift. So obviously, this is not what you would normally do in a situation like this. And I've already metered this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my color checker really quickly. And um, one of the things that's great is it has a huge lanyard. And that's so uh, if you have an assistant, they can just sort of wear it in and yank it and have it over here. But what we're going to do first is I want to show you how to use 
a couple things. So there's the color checker, the calibration target down here. There's some, this is for post-production adjustment on the top. But also there is a, a target for setting custom white balance in your camera. And it's super easy. So uh, Alexis, I'm going to have you hold this uh, just like this for a second. There you go. And to do a custom white balance, um, it depends on if you have a Canon or a, a Nikon camera, but basically all you have to do is take a picture of this target. So hold that up to your face. And I'll have her hold the target up to her face as much as possible because this is really what I'm concerned with mostly is the color of her face and her complexion. And I want that target to be as close as possible to her face so that I'm getting the exact same light on my target as uh, she's getting on her face. So all I'll do here is I've already set my camera to custom white balance. And so I'll take a picture uh, really closely of this target. And then I can go into my menu and I'll choose that as my custom white balance and I'll say OK. And that's set. So uh, depending on what kind of camera you have, you're probably familiar with this procedure. If you have a, a Nikon, you push uh, your white balance to pre and then you hold white balance down for a couple of seconds till pre starts to flash. And then you would take a picture of this. Really what you want is this gray. Uh, you want that to, to at least take up 50% or more of your screen. And uh, so that's how that works. And that's pretty simple. Okay, let's talk about how to use the actual target and um, how to hold it. So what I'll do is I'm going to take this. And uh, again, now we have this so it's sort of uh, flat. And there is a right side up and a wrong side up. So what you want is on this, you want the right side up to be where the little faces are. So that's the, the right side up. Don't do it upside down. Um, do it this way. And that's important so when we uh, do the, the creation of the profile, the software can recognize everything. The other thing we want to make sure that we do is that we don't have it in any wrong angle. Because if we have it at a wrong angle, then the, uh, the system won't be able to see all of these color patches. And so we're going to do that really quickly. And again, we want to make sure that we're holding it from the back like that. So we don't have any fingerprints on here because that could deteriorate the, the, uh, the target. And we're going to have Alexis hold that right next to her face. Then I'm going to get a couple of photos. So we're going to do it the wrong way first. So yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to maybe have this lanyard sort of over it, whatever. Yeah, so if we do this, and uh, I'm going to get in really nice and close, I'll show you in a second. Also, if I'm like in front of the light, like that, that's absolutely the wrong way to do it because my exposure is wrong and we won't be able to see exactly what we're getting. And I'll show you these pictures in a second because we're tethered. All right, now let's do it the right way. So just like that. And so we want that as much as possible to be at a 90 degree angle to our camera. And I don't want to stand in front of my light so I'm blocking the exposure. And then I'm going to have this just, there we go, just like that. Beautiful. Okay, now we have our target. I'm going to grab this. And then we're going to shoot just a few pictures so that we can show the effect of the target uh, when we get this into Lightroom. And so let's have you a yeah, beautiful little smile. Excellent. Yeah, big, huge, awesome. And then we're going to get a, a little bit longer shot here. Excellent. And then turn a little bit toward me. Yeah, there you go. Just like that. Yes, good, good, good. Perfect. Okay, we have some shots here that are going to work. All right, thanks, Alexis. And. Uh, these are all coming in. You can see these in the, uh, the Lightroom catalog. And now we'll go through here and uh, start working with these. And again, if you have questions, make sure you ask questions. I haven't seen any pop up here yet. Um, I'm going to shut off my tether. So let's talk about some of the things that we're going to do here. I'm going to take these and I'm going to throw them into my collection so that we have all of our shots. There we go. So all of our shots together. If you're not familiar with Lightroom, um, this is not a Lightroom tutorial. So I'm going to be going pretty quickly through the different modules and stuff. So if, you, if Lightroom is something that's new to you, um, you might want to check out some training uh, so you understand all this stuff. So I'll, keep, I'll try to explain as much as possible what I'm doing. But the very first thing I want to do is I want to create a custom profile. And then I'll show you how to use that profile. And we're going to start with the easiest method possible. And that's doing this in Lightroom. Um, and you can see here when we have this wrong that we have, uh, you know, these are covered by her cheek. That's no good. And this is not going to work because these aren't square. We want that to be nice and flat. We also want to make sure that we don't have any glare on this. And so if we had a big glare on the, the actual target, we'd have to maybe tilt that up or down to make sure we don't have that because that will throw off our calibration. So this is looking really good. And we also want to make sure this is in focus 
on the actual color checker passport, not necessarily on the face of the model. So all, everything looks good with this. So let's go ahead and create this. Now the software that I'm using is shipped with uh, the, the color checker passport. And so when you get it, you install the software. It creates this plugin for Lightroom. And uh, it also installs the, uh, the DNG uh, profile manager and the color checker passport software. So that all comes with the passport. And if you don't have that, you can also download it from xrayphoto.com. And so uh, all that's available to you. So what we'll do here is I'm going to go in to Lightroom and I'm going to export with a preset. So that says export with preset. And then there's this right here, color checker passport. And so what I will do is I'm going to click on that and I need to create a profile name. Now you should name these something that are meaningful uh, because eventually you're going to have a lot of different profiles and we want to ma make this something that's actually meaningful. I'm horrible at making meaningful names, but I'm going to say this is 2013 and I will name the, the type of lighting. And the, the other thing that's important to note about creating profiles is that you want to create a profile uh, for every different lighting condition. And so let's say right now I'm using a beauty dish, that's what we shot with. If I change that to a different modifier, maybe uh, an Octobox or something that's by a different manufacturer, well that can change the color temperature of your light, it can change the characteristic of your light, so you would want a profile for that Octobox. Let's say we change to uh, uh, several different lights, you would want to profile again, you want to create profiles for every type of lighting. So I like to name this by date and then the lighting, so I'm going to say um, Alexis and then uh, We'll say beauty dish, beauty dish. And you don't have to put dashes in here, but I do that. And I'm gonna save that. Okay, now once that's saved, what's happening is up in the upper left-hand corner, you can see a little progress bar. So uh, this is being processed, and it might take a few minutes. It depends on your computer and the, the speed of your computer. So I'm using a Mac Pro, it's a tower, and it's uh, pretty speedy but it'll still take a, a few minutes. And it also depends on the size of the file. Um, and so larger raw files take a little bit longer. And that's another thing I forgot to mention. You need to shoot in raw when you're doing this. So make sure that you're shooting in raw. If you're shooting in JPEG, this is not gonna work. You need to shoot in raw to create these profiles. All right, so this says, hey, Color Checker Passport has been generated successfully, but guess what? Lightroom must be restarted to activate the profile. Now the reason for that, and this is something that's important to note, that um, there is a, an actual folder on your screen, on your computer, there's an actual folder on the hard drive that stores all the different profiles that are created by the Color Checker Passport, either by the software or by the plugin. And what happens is when Lightroom launches, it looks in that folder and all of the different profiles it sees, it loads in so, and it makes those available to you. And so if you delete one or you change it, um, Lightroom doesn't know it until you stop Lightroom and start it again. So when it launches, every time that's when it's looking to see what's available. So anytime you create a new profile, uh, you have to close Lightroom and reopen it. And so that's sort of the Adobe architecture. And I, I hope Adobe fixes that so it can actually go out and maybe click a refresh button. But right now, that's how it works. So for us to use this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit Lightroom. And then I'm just going to open Lightroom right back open. So I'm just closing it, opening it up. That's it. All right, so now what we can do is we're going to go into our develop module in Lightroom. And I wanna show you some things here that are, I think, pretty impressive. So when we go to the develop module, and we have a car alarm outside, sorry, I don't know if you can hear that. We have this uh, panel at the very uh, lower right-hand side that's called camera calibration. And the first thing to note, there are different processes. And so when uh, Lightroom first came out, it was 2003. That's crazy, almost 10 years ago. Well, actually 10 years ago. So 2003, and this process is the, sort of the formula that Lightroom uses to process your raw files. 2010, there was an update that was pretty substantial. And then 2012, last year, there was a, even a, a newer process. So if you have older files, the first thing you wanna do is Make sure you're at the first, uh, the most current process. And let me show you why this is really important. I'm gonna go to a, a shot that I made um, years ago. So this is a shot that I took of this model. Her name is Deska. And if we look, the process says 2003, and the profile is Adobe Standard. And what I want you to note is her hair. Notice her hair just has no uh, detail at all. It's just sort of this 
this dark mass. If I just change this process here to 2012, we get more detail in her hair. I don't know if that shows up in there in the video as well as it does on my screen, but we, we, uh, those shadows are opened up. We see more details in the hair just by changing the process. The other thing that we're going to note here, um, take a notice of the color chips in the passport. And what I'll be doing here is I'm going to be changing these profiles. Now these profiles are the default profiles that come with the camera. And so camera uh, profiles are specific to a camera. So if I had a uh, Nikon D3X, these would be different profiles if I had a 5D Mark III or 1DS Mark II or a Fujifilm camera. These would be different. And so these match um, loosely the uh, color profiles that ship with your camera. And so if you've seen, uh, you can set up your camera to have different profiles for portrait or landscape or whatever. That's what these are. And then this ACR 2.4 and 4.4, these are Adobe Camera Raw profiles. So 2.4 is an older one, 4.4 is the most recent. And so uh, those are just default profiles that are shipped, but we want to use one that we created our, ourselves. So watch what happens though to these chips. When I go from Adobe Standard to, let's say, um, Landscape, you can see that the red shifted and the green shifted. If we go to, um, let's go to Portrait, again, you can see the shifts in color. So we'll go back to Landscape, back to Neutral, and try this um, from neutral to landscape, that's a pretty big shift in color. Try this at home, because uh, if you don't see this showing up on the, the Ustream or the, the webcast, if you try this uh, on your own computer, it's really shocking at how the color is shifting here. So from camera neutral, she's got sort of these dull skin tones going over here to camera portrait. That makes her a little bit rosier and, and a little bit more healthy. Um, so that's what's happening is these different um, profiles are being added and that's changing the color characteristics. But what we want to do is we want to use a color profile that's accurate, that actually represents what uh, our subject's skin or the sky or whatever it looks like. And then we can go from accurate and then we can sweeten the photo from there. And so for portrait photography, you want accurate color and then you want to take that accurate color and you want to sweeten up a little bit. So, but we want to start from a, a good space. So over here in this shot that we just made, um, notice that we now have this 2013 Alexis Beauty Dish. Why did that not show up in the other photo? Well, the other photo was shot using a Canon 1DS Mark II camera, and the photo that we're looking at right now was shot with a Canon 5D Mark III. And so because the camera profiles are specific to a camera, only the camera profiles to, that are specific to that camera will show up in the picture. So only the profiles that I shot with my Canon 5D Mark III are going to show up when I'm working on a picture that was shot with a Canon 5D Mark III. And so that's why those don't show up. So what we're going to do here is I will just click right here on this Alexis Beauty Dish. And then what's happening here is this blue background actually uh, works and everything is good and her skin tone looks just like it does in real life. So if we went from neutral uh, back to this one that we created, you can see that her skin tone is changing pretty dramatically. The other thing that we can do here is uh, we want a really accurate white balance. And so what I can do is I can hit W to get my white balance tool. And there is this row of uh, chips right here, these little chips, if I zoom in on these. And these are for um, setting your white balance in either portrait photography, that's the top, or in landscape photography, that's the bottom. And the neutral target always has this little uh, dent out of it. So the, on the, uh, the photos for portraits, you would click this very first um, chip right here. If you were shooting a scenic photo, you would uh, click the center to get your, um, your balanced and neutral white balance. So if I click that, I've got an accurate white balance that's set for this, sorry. Um, now our color is set and our white balance is set. If I wanted to warm up Lex's face a little bit, what I could do is I can choose one of these other uh, chips right here. So um, if you look really closely, you'll see that this has a little plus next to it and a plus. So it's saying I want to warm up the, the skin tones of a model here. On the, um, on the scenics, you're warming up or cooling down different scenic colors. So usually th those are earth tones, greens, and blues. So we're going to um, go in here and we're going to warm up 
likes his skin tone just a little bit. So it just makes her a little bit rosier. If I go really all the way to the end, you can see that now she's looking almost like she's embarrassed. I don't like that. I just like a little bit more warmth. And so now we have accurate color that's sweetened a little bit, and we can go from there. Now what we want to do is, since we have this all set up, and we want to um, take this and apply it to everything else that was in that photo set, all I have to do in Lightroom is choose the first one, and you can see that this uh, border is selected, and then I'll click my Shift button and click the last uh, photo there, and then in the right panel, I can go over here to this little button that says Sync Settings, and I'm going to click that, and now I have this Synchronized Settings dialog, and I can choose whatever I want to, to, uh, to change this. So what I'll do is I just want to make sure that my process version, so that was that little version I showed you before, that 2012, or 2010, I want to make sure that's at the, uh, the latest, which is 2012, so I, my first shot I did that. And then I want to change my color treatment, and I also want to make sure that I have my white balance selected because we did that. Um, and then we also, all of our, our uh, calibration, we want to make sure that we have that right there. So I've got my calibration, my process version, those two things are very important, and my white balance. And then I, I also choose treatment and color because if I've done some things there, um, I can do that. Or you can just say all of those. So once I've done that, I'll say synchronize. And it now applies what I did to this very first picture to all of the photos. And so they are set. And you'll notice that in the grid view, now we have this little plus minus next to all of these photos. And what that means is that we've adjusted our color using that profile that was just created. And so uh, things are just all set up. All right, so I haven't seen any questions come in yet. But if you have questions, make sure that you ask them. And then those are going to be forwarded to me. Um, and we want to make sure that we get to all of your questions. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you, uh, because we uh, set up this red and blue background, so you can sort of see the, the differences in calibrations again on something that's not just skin tones. What we'll do here is, um, I'm going to go down to my uh, process in my develop module. So I'm in the develop module now. And just watch what happens when I'm changing these. Uh, first, I'll just do the process change. And there's not much different there. The only thing you can really see are the shadows changing. But watch what happens to the colors when I go to camera standard. You can see those colors shifting pretty dramatically, especially the blues. Doing camera portraits, see how that blue goes from bland to really crazy to faithful, almost washed out. So that's what those profiles are really doing. So we want a profile that's built, that's accurate, and so that's, that's how that works. Okay, still no questions, which is cool. We're going to keep going on. So what we want to do here is we want to create a custom profile um, using a different process. So we've created a custom profile in Lightroom. What if you don't have Lightroom and you want to create a custom profile? Well, it's pretty simple. What we'll do here is I'm going to go over to Bridge. And in Bridge, I have this photo that I took a long time ago. This is of uh, Desca that we shot. And I'm also going to open my Color Checker Passport. And this is um, telling me, hey, I haven't calibrated this. It's seeing that we're, we're streaming, and the streaming system hasn't been calibrated, so it's giving me some warnings. Um, you want to do this on a calibrated monitor, by the way. So, that is ideal, but because we're streaming to a different system, it doesn't think it's calibrated. So what we want to do here is we want to drag and drop a DNG image to this uh, piece of software. Well, the problem with that is um, some cameras don't shoot DNG files. Some do. Some people just like to shoot the normal camera raw that's proprietary. In other words, Canon's CR2 file or um, Nikon's um, uh, DEF, I think, file, but it's the, it's the file that's, uh, that's specific to your camera. And they don't, a lot of people don't want to switch over to DNG files. Well, that's fine. If you have DNG files that are um, digital negative files, Adobe standard, out of your camera, you can just drag them right in here and use those. If you don't, let me show you how to create one. So what you'll do here is um, you just take your uh, raw file. So this is uh, camera raw, CR2. So make sure it's a raw file. And then I'm going to open that in Camera Raw. It's going to open it up. I'm not going to do anything to it. I'm just opening it. So I haven't changed anything. I haven't changed any white balance, nothing. 
And I'm going to go to the lower left hand side and I'm going to save this image and I'm going to save it as a DNG file. So it's going to ask me what the format is and I'm choosing digital neg negative right there. And then I want the camera raw to be the latest possible and then uh, I'll just go with the defaults there. So and I'm going to save this in the same location so it'll just show up in bridge right next to where I am. So I'll click save and then I'll say done. And now, if you'll notice, we have a DNG file right next to our uh, camera raw file. And we can use that, whoops, sorry, I scrolled on accident. We can use that to create our custom profile. Let me show you how to create a custom profile. All you have to do, you can use your Finder window or your uh, Windows Explorer window. You just drag it, drag it right onto the software. It's going to say it's loading image. So I just dragged it from Bridge right onto my Color Checker Passport. And it is loading in. And while that's doing, I'm going to take a drink of my coffee. Mmm. Coffee is delicious. Okay, now we can see that this is loaded in and the software has found all of the different targets. So you can see that it's, it's lining up correctly. And this is why we need to have that uh, to be taken at the correct angle, at a 90 degree angle, because if it's askew, it's not, the software's not going to be able to find this. You can do some adjustments here. Um, you can place crop marks to tell this where to go to sort of help it out. Um, but if you do it right, it just, it's going to load it in. And then you just say create profile. And then it's going to ask me what to save this as. And I'm going to call this um, 2013 uh, Deska Demo. And I'll save that. And then it's going to create that camera profile. So it's doing the exact same thing that our plugin did in Lightroom. And it'll give us this little message that says applications using this profile may need to be restarted. In other words, they need to be restarted. So uh, this isn't going to show up in um, Lightroom until I restart. So I'm going to close my Color Checker Passport software. Um, before I do that, we're getting some questions coming in. Um, and so, um, yeah, let me finish this and then I'll answer these questions. So I'm going to close this Color Checker Passport software. Then I'm going to zip back over to Lightroom. I'm going to close Lightroom. Open Lightroom. And now we'll see that it, that profile is available to us. So I'll go to this picture that we were working with. I'll go to the Develop module. We're in the Develop module. I will go down to my camera calibration. And now, look at that. 2013 Deska Demo. I can click that. And now we have that color profile that we use. I'll set the white balance. And she looks great. And so now we have all of that available to us. Okay, let's answer some questions really, five, uh, really fast. So number one, does this work in CS5? Yes. So all of the stuff that we're showing you today works in older versions of Lightroom. I think from Lightroom 3 up to Lightroom 5. So Brenda, correct me if I'm wrong on that. But the plugin works in Lightroom 3, 4, 5. Um, and then it also works in uh, Adobe Camera Raw, CS5, um, CS6, and then CC. I've forgotten all the different, is there a CF, CS7? I'm not sure. But yeah, it works definitely in, in older versions. Um, and is there any conflict use, with using this with photos that have gone through DxO Optics? I'm not familiar with DxO Optics, but um, there shouldn't be any conflict um, because you can use these profiles not just in Lightroom and not just in Adobe Camera Raw, but any software that uses normal ICC profiles can use these profiles. So uh, it, it'll work. Um, do you also use lens calibration at this time? So we're calibrating specifically for color. And so um, one of the things that's important to understand is when you're calibrating for color, you're really calibrating a system. And that system is the lens that's being used, the camera body and the sensor in the body, and then the light that's illuminating your subject. And so when you're doing a calibration for color, it's taking all of that into consideration. And so if I was really, really picky about my color, if I went from a 24 to 70 lens to a 70 to 200, I probably need to get another calibration just to be really accurate. I don't think there's going to be too much of a difference, but if you really, really, really want to be picky, you can. Well, I think you're asking, though, um, is if I'm creating for things like chromatic aberration and for vignetting um, and my lens profiles. And so in Lightroom and in Adobe Camera Raw, there's a lens correction here, and you can do things like defringing for chromatic aberration, 
and you can uh, do a profile to, to, um, to correct lens distortion and things like that. And that's a different calibration. It's not the color calibration we're talking about. Um, so let's see, how do you use the color checker passport with landscape? So with the color checker with landscape, what you would do, it's the same thing, except for instead of having somebody hold this, you would set the color checker in a location that has the same light that your, uh, your scene has, and then you just take a picture of it. You can just have somebody hold it, in fact. As long as the light is the same as your scene, you'll just get a really tight shot of that, and then you shoot your entire uh, scene, and then you can go in there and, and create that profile. It's the same exact thing. Um, let's see, custom white balances for thumbnail accuracy. Raw doesn't have any white balance in, uh, in it. Yeah, so when you're um, setting a custom white balance in your camera, what's happening is uh, if you shoot in a, a JPEG image and you, shoot your, you set your custom white balance in your camera, that's actually applied to the JPEG image and it's, it's there forever. And if you want to change the custom white balance later, you can't. You can change the colors and stuff, but it's not the same as, as having accurate color. When you're shooting in RAW and you set the custom white balance in the camera, what's happening is that white balance is stored as a piece of metadata in your um, raw file. And so when you bring the, that into uh, Lightroom, and we'll just go in here to Lightroom, into the develop module, what we're looking at is um, I can say as shot. And as shot has a color temperature, so this is 5800 Kelvin, and it's got a, a tint of plus 23. That was the setting that we got from setting our white balance in camera. Um, if I do a custom white balance using this chip here, which is a little bit more accurate, you can see that it was 100 degrees off. So it, was, it went from 58 Kelvin to 5900 Kelvin. And so, uh, yeah, all it's doing is it's storing that uh, information in the raw file, and then you can later go and change that in Lightroom if you prefer. Um, is there any specific patch to click for landscape on the color table? There is. So on, on, the, uh, on the top side of your color checker passport, the second row is used for white balance. And the difference is, is on the top row for portrait photography, these are, are white balances that are neutral and they will warm up the photo um, specific to the skin tones. On the bottom side, what we have, we have a neutral target, which is the same. Uh, but we have either a warming or a cooling, and these are uh, tones that are more specific to scenic photography. So these are um, things like the greens and the blues. Um, so they're, they're seasoned specifically for scenic photography to either warm the scene up or cool it down. With portrait photography, you're only warming. You're not cooling. Okay. Um, uh, how did he create the DNG image? Again, I went into Bridge, I opened my file in Adobe Camera Raw, and then I just saved it as a DNG file. If you missed that, you can rewind and watch that in the, in the, uh, in the archive webinar, and you can see that again. Um, <clears throat> if we use white balance in the color checker panel, why do we need to use another white balance in the color passport? In other words, I'm, I think what you're asking is, if we're setting the white balance in post, why do we need to do the in-camera white balance? Why do both? Well, the reason I do both is um, usually I'm shooting for a client. There's somebody that that's, wants to see those photos. And so if I set the white balance in the camera as I'm shooting, they're going to come into my library pretty color accurate without the profile uh, attached. And so at least the clients can look and see something that's close to what they're going to get as far as color is concerned. And then once we get in and start doing a lot of post-production and sweetening things up and making it a masterpiece that we're going to print, then we go in and we do the really detailed um, and perfect color. Okay, um, and then uh, also Adobe RGB or sRGB, what's the preference and what's the effect? Well, um, we don't have enough time to go into the differences, but basically the Adobe RGB color space, in other words, how many colors uh, are captured and how many colors are displayed, it's a much wider gamut. And so you have a lot more blues, you have a lot more uh, yellows and reds and all of those things than you do in sRGB. And so, unfortunately, what we're broadcasting right now only shows sRGB, in other words, the small amount of colors. And so, uh, normally, you want to have as many colors as possible, and then you create a profile that's specific to a printer. Uh, X-Rite has a lot of products of doing that. 
and then you have as much color as possible going to your external device. I don't. Uh, I shoot normally in Adobe RGB. I think Adobe RGB Pro, but when you're shooting in RAW, all the color always comes in all the time, and you can always make that decision at a later time. So you don't have to decide in camera if you're shooting sRGB or Adobe RGB or Adobe RGB Pro um, or 1998 or whatever um, profile it is. Um, but the thing is, if you shoot in RAW, you should shoot RAW. You get all of the color, and then you can make the decision on what profile to use uh, in post based on the uh, final output of the prints. So unfortunately, we don't have time to go into all of that stuff, and I'm sure there are some webinars that Brenda has um, done in the past that talk about the post-production and choosing which profile is correct. But if you shoot in RAW, you don't really have to worry about that too much. Um, OK, so what do you check if you're shooting portraits of African-American or Asian people? Um, there's no difference. Not at all. And so the reason I think some, there's a confusion there is uh, if you're shooting uh, people that have dark, really dark complexions, uh, what can happen is uh, the metering can be thrown off because um, really dark complected people actually, um, uh, it's just like wearing dark clothes or something. So what happens is the meter looks at things and says, oh, okay, I think this should be a little bit lighter than it actually is, and so it can throw that off. But as far as color is concerned, you just want to capture um, the uh, color checker passport and then the color is going to be accurate no matter what race you're shooting, uh, it doesn't matter. And so if it's an African American person or a Native American person or an Asian person, it doesn't matter, your color is going to be accurate if, as long as you get that. It's the metering, I think, um, uh, at times that can throw uh, people off just a little bit, but not the color itself. Um, okay. Let's keep going because we have more to uh, talk to. We've got a lot of questions coming in, um, and so we will, we will keep chugging on that. Okay, so we've created our DNG profile. We created a profile using our, um, our Color Checker Passport software. The other thing that we haven't done is we haven't gone in and managed our profiles. And this is something that uh, a lot of people have asked me about. Because if you go in and you're creating these profiles over and over and over again, you could have dozens or hundreds of profiles if you do these for each specific um, photo shoot that you do. And so luckily, there's something that we can use, and it's called the DNG Profile Manager. And this, again, comes with uh, the Color Checker Passport. And so I'm going to close this really fast and open it again, because just like Lightroom, the DNG Profile Manager has to go through and see what's available, and it'll load this in. So you can see that we have these three new profiles that we just created, Matt, the Beauty Dish, and the Demo. And notice that they're enabled. And I have a bunch of other um, profiles here that are not enabled. But I want to show you what's happening behind the scenes. So I'm going to go into my file, click File, and I'm going to open my DNG Profile folder. So when I do that, I have this folder that's called Camera Profiles. And you don't really need to know where this is. X-Rite's going to take care of all of this for you. Um, but notice that we have our Matt, our Lexus Beauty, and our Deskus Demo. And these are our, our profiles that are created. And so what happens is this is the actual folder that when Lightroom opens, it looks in here to see which profiles are available. Watch what happens when I go into my DNG Profile Manager. And I'm going to enable a bunch of these. So we've got this Aislinn and the Dawn makeup and Ellie profile. And you can see how horrible I am at naming these. I should be better at this. But I'm just going to put a bunch of these and enable those. And when I go back over here, notice that all of a sudden, magically, we have all of these different profiles that show up. They just pop in there. And so that is how you have you manage uh, profiles showing up in Lightroom. So if I close Lightroom, then I'm going to reopen Lightroom. What we're going to see now is all of these profiles that I created in the past are going to be available to us. And also note that I'm going to sort these by camera. So notice that these uh, I only have two or yeah two profiles that we created here from the 5D Mark III. But from the Canon uh, 1DS Mark II, I've got a bunch. So let's go into a 1DS Mark II photo here in uh, Lightroom. So let's grab this one. 
I'm going to my develop module really quickly here. And now when I go down here to my profiles, notice that now I have bunches. So we've got Mikey Blue and Laurel Skin Tone and Red Wallpaper and Laurel Ray and Don Bushes and all these other ones that weren't here before now show up. And so if you're doing a lot of profiling, what you'll see is this can sort of become unwieldy if you have you know, hundreds of profiles. And so the way that you manage what shows up is by using the Color Checker or DNG Profile Manager. That's, that's how that works. Um, OK. So the other thing that I wanted to show you here is um, one other really important thing. So let's uh, say that we wanted to take uh, this. Here's one here that says profile. I have no idea what that is. And I want to rename it. Well, the thing that's really important to do is if you rename a file, don't rename it in the finder. So we don't want to go in here and rename profile in uh, the Windows Explorer or the profile um, folder. What we want to do is go into our Color Checker Passport DNG Profile Manager, and then we'll click File, Rename Profile. So when I do that, it says Profile, and then I can name this, let's say, 2013 Updated Profile. Still a horrible name. But then we can go in and we can take a look at our Finder window, and there it is. It's already renamed on the computer as well as in the software. And then if we go over here, notice it's not updated in Lightroom. Why? Well, because Lightroom hasn't loaded it in. You have to close Lightroom, reload Lightroom, and then off we go. It pops up, go into our develop module, and just like that, there it is, updated profile. So if you're not seeing your profiles uh, show up in Lightroom, then you just need to stop Lightroom and reopen it. All right, let's go into uh, Bridge again. And we have this uh, photo right here. It's a really small photo. And I want to apply a profile of that. So I'm going to open that in Camera Raw. And when I open Camera Raw, Camera Raw uses the same engine that Lightroom does. So Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom, they're, they're the same software in the um, running on your computer. And so a lot of times when you're um, updating Photoshop, it will tell you, hey, you have to update uh, the Adobe Camera Raw module in Lightroom and Photoshop. That will keep them in sync. So our controls are very, very similar. And so when we go in here and we click on the little camera in Adobe Camera Raw, notice our process. We have different processes, so you want to use the most current process. And then our camera profile, here it is. Here are our profiles that we've created. And so those show up the exact same way they do in Lightroom. So you can choose the Desca Demo, and there it is. And then we can also choose our white balance tool, which is right up here. We can grab that. And we can go down and we can click our white balance. And now we've done uh, the exact same thing that we did in Lightroom in Adobe Camera Raw. And now that we have that done, then we can go in and we can start working with exposure and contrast and highlights and shadows and all those different things that we would normally do. And then once we were done with that, we can open that image in Photoshop. And that works just fine. Um, OK, we have more questions. We have just a few minutes here. And so I want to get to as many questions as possible. We've got uh, about seven or eight minutes before we have to be done. So um, we'll do that. OK, does this work in Aperture? Well, Aperture doesn't have the, the uh, Lightroom plugin. And honestly, I haven't played with Aperture enough to know how it works in Aperture. So um, I can't answer that. Brenda, maybe you can give me some help there. So uh, in Aperture, I, I don't believe the, uh, the, I know the creation process is not the same as it is. Um, but I don't know if there's an ability in Aperture to use camera profiles. So um, I'll see if I can get an answer to that really fast. OK, the other question is this. How would you use this for an event like a Sweet 16 party? Um, well, it depends on how you're shooting. So let's say you're shooting a Sweet 16 party with an um, on-camera flash, and you're running around doing things. Um, so what's going to happen is, remember, you're, you're calibrating a system. So in that instance, your system would be your flash, your lens, your camera. And so what you could do before the party starts is just have somebody hold this, take a picture of it, and as long as you're shooting in RAW, you have that for later use. 
um, and then you can just go in and, and uh, create a profile and that's going to make all your color great. And so you have that profile to be used for any of those types of situations and you don't really have to do that once. Because once you know the characteristics of your camera and the lens and the body, everything's going to be fine. The only other thing is if you uh, gel your flash, let's say you have um, maybe some, uh, an amber or something on there, some orange to match incandescent light, then you would want to do another camera calibration. But once you have that, then you have it once and you can use this all, all the time. How can we use the passport to check color temp variables among different strobe heads and light modifiers? Well, that's pretty easy, actually. Let me show you how you can do that. Um, I'll go into, um, I'll just show you something that's really cool in Lightroom. We'll go into the develop module here. Lex is going to love this picture. Sorry. Um, so <laughs> what we have here is we're going to hit the W button for our white balance tool. And what we can do is we can just click in this space and we're going to get a white balance. So that's 6,050. So what you could do is maybe put this on a stand or hold this, uh, you know, have somebody hold it. It'd be more accurate if you put it on a stand. And you could set up different light modifiers and then take a, a photo as long as it's the same um, aperture value, basically. And you could shoot with a softbox, beauty dish, different flash head, you know, Bowen's head, a pro photo head, a white lightning, alien B, whatever. And then you can just check to see what the different variations in color temperature are at, an, at the exact same exposure level. So in other words, you would uh, make sure that they're all shooting at F10, for example. You could do that. The other thing that you can do that, is, um, that shows up with this color uh, white balance tool is notice that at the very bottom, and I can't use my mouse to show you, but at this pick target neutral, there is a... A, an R, and it says 81.7, and a G, 81.9, and a B, 81.8. What that's saying is, what's the percentage of red, green, and blue? And ideally, to have perfect white balance, those percentages would be exactly the same. 87, 81.7, 81.7, 81.7. But a tenth of a percent is very, very minor. And so what you can do before you create your white balance, before you get this all done, uh, what you could do, I'm going to go in here and say as shot. You can go in and look and see what the shift is. So as shot, and I did a custom white balance, you can see it's, it's bang on. So it's almost ideally perfect. Um, and you might have a shift a little bit more red or a little bit more blue, and you can see that pretty clearly. Um, let's grab this guy here, and we'll see if we have a shift in these colors. So... And this one, again, it's, it's pretty bang on, but I'll do this. I'll make it a nasty color, and you can see there we have blue at 100% and red at 80. So if you had it like a color bias, you could see that showing up. But as soon as you set your white balance, it's going to go away. So that's why these are, are there. You want these to be exactly uh, perfect. Okay. Um, all right, what if you just use Photoshop and not Lightroom? You absolutely can do that. So if you just use Photoshop... What you're going to do, again, you're going to use your Color Checker Passport software to create your profiles. And then those profiles are going to show up when you open your photos in Camera Raw. So when you do that, you go to this little guy right here. Now you've got your profile. It's set up there. And so, um, yeah, that's what you would do. You would just use Camera Raw to create your profiles and make sure everything's set there. You don't have to have Lightroom to do this. You can do it in either way. Um, okay, if you make a profile to an image and then later delete that profile through the manager, is the file changed back to the pre-profile settings? That's a great question, and the answer is yes. And let me show you what happens. Um, and so what we're going to do is, and we're going to go back to Lightroom because it's easy, and we have our, our shot right here, and this was using our profile Alexis Beauty Dish. Okay, so what happens to this when we get rid of Alexis Beauty Dish? So we're going to go in here, I'm going to deactivate Alexis Beauty Dish. I'm going to go to Lightroom, quit Lightroom, open Lightroom. Now it's going to check to see if it's there. I think this is our last question because we are out of time here. And as soon as this opens, we will go back in we go back down here, 
And look, now it chose at random 2013 mat, because that was the top one. So yeah, it defaults to basically what's the, what's the, the thing at the very top. And so um, you would lose that profile. And so what you could do in that situation, if you have a lot of profiles uh, that are being used and you deactivate one, all you do is just go back into your profile manager, oops, and uh, reactivate it, reopen Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw, and, uh, and activate that profile, and, and then you can use it again. And so it's all good. Okay, I think that uh, we've answered as many questions as we possibly can. We are out of time. One thing I wanted to mention to you is that this webinar is going to be archived on the X-Rite Photo website. And so you can go to that and see it in full high definition video. And so we're broadcasting in a lower definition, but you can see this in full HD. It's gonna be available, I believe, um, in the next couple of days. It'll be posted out there um, alongside the stuff that Brenda did earlier uh, before I jumped on live. And so you can see all of this stuff. Make sure you visit uh, xrayphoto.com to see all of the different webinars that um, have been done, the blog has a lot of information. We didn't get to it, uh, but people were asking before we started about Mavericks, the new OS for um, uh, the Mac. And uh, the stuff that I showed you today is fully compatible with Mavericks. And so if you want more information about that, go to the x right Photo blog, and there is a link there to show you all about that. But we're out of time, and I really appreciate the opportunity to come and talk to you today about the x right Color Checker Passport. I use it in my workflow every single day, every single photo shoot that I have. And it's something that has really changed the way I take photos. And it's really changed the way that I uh, post-process my photos as well. And there's a lot more to uh, the post-processing that we weren't able to get to. But now you know at least how to get that profile, how to apply it in Adobe Camera Raw, as well as in Lightroom, and then how to manipulate those using the DNG Profile Manager. And so start there, and once you start playing with those profiles, you'll see how much color and how much shadow detail and all that stuff that you may have been uh, either losing or it was shifted, and, and it'll change the way you, you uh, do all your post-processing. Again, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope to see you again on an upcoming webinar in the future. Thanks again.